morning, everybody. <laughs> Happy Monday. Welcome. I'm not usually on camera on Monday, but uh, here we are. We are rapidly approaching spring, and uh, the general consensus from the community is that we need a bit of a pick-me-up. I am in the same boat. Um, I think it's a combination of factors. Speaking strictly as a Canadian, March sucks. I don't like March at all. It's my least favorite month of the year. It is dark and ugly and gross and it's going, it's hot, it's cold, it's hot, it's cold. So I'm done with March. I know we're more than halfway through, thank goodness. And uh, anyway, I feel like we could all use a little bit more of a pick-me-up today. So a little something different for today's Monday. Um, I'm going to try cross stitch on Tunisian crochet. I am going to show you what I'm up to as I work along with it. Um, I'll explain myself here in a second. Um, we've got a link to Friday's tutorial in the description box down below. We did some Tunisian simple stitch samplers, partly because I'm kind of interested in exploring cross stitch, partly because I think it's a fun way to approach Tunisian crochet. So if you're new to it or you've kind of thought about it, but you're not really sure you want to wrangle the big hooks or even go get any, it's kind of a nice way to enter um, regular Tunisian crochet. You just need a regular crochet hook. So I just used a non-ergonomic hook. So just a little sort of a skinny one. It can still have a thumb deck on it. That's not a big deal. Uh, but you just need a little bit more space than you normally would when you're doing regular crochet. Anyway, that's all explained in the video. It's a fun way to practice different Tunisian stitches. We did the Tunisian Simple Stitch Friday. I am using a sampler that is the Tunisian Simple Stitch. This sampler is a little bit bigger than the one I made in um, on the, the Friday video. And I've put pattern notes for this canvas in the description box down below as well. So I still went with a 10 foundation chain, um, but I did 10 rows of the Tunisian stitch instead of just eight before I put my single crochet border on. Now, there's a reason for that. I am going to make myself a little cross stitch strawberry. We, this is considered um, single crochet or regular cross stitch um, ratio. So unlike the Fair Isle style graphs that were like a two to one ratio, so we could use double crochet, this little graph that I made is a one to one ratio. So if you were going to do um, Fair Isle style or mosaic crochet um, and use this graph, it would be a single crochet graph but I'm going to use it as cross stitch. Mr. And Stitches has a copy of it. He's going to pop up on the screen for you guys. So if you want to try and follow along and do a little cross stitch with me, um, we'll have that there for you. Otherwise, um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to try the cross stitch. If you wanted to do this in a mosaic single crochet instead of me doing, well, doing cross stitch with me, then I'd like to see that. <laughs> so if you try that, Take a picture, send it to us at the Etsy shop. Um, also, while I'm on the topic of the Etsy shop, everything Tunisian is on sale today in our Etsy shop. So that's our sneaky sale. And if you are a Silk or Vicuña member, a written pattern for Friday's little Tunisian simple stitch sampler is now on the members web page. So if you didn't see that little notification this weekend, uh, but your Silk or Vicuña, then um, you can log in and get a copy of the pattern for Friday's tutorial. I think I've covered everything. Okay, so we do have a little graph we will have up on the screen today while I'm trying this cross stitch. This little strawberry is my design. So um, I was, I, I love strawberry. So I was fiddling around with just something simple. I wanted something really, really simple. Um, I considered a heart. I considered a couple of the, the really basic things that we did with the Fair Isle style, but I decided that I, Think spring. Think spring. <laughs> so strawberries. Strawberries are sweet and spring-like. So I am thinking spring. I'm going to try strawberry. I also feel that's pretty simple. There's only like four different colors in here. <laughs> I've got three different little yellow dots and I've got three light green and three dark green squares and the rest is like red or pink. Um, whatever you might have on hand. So I'm going to do that. Now a um, couple people have been really sweet. On Friday I asked at the end of the video if anybody had done cross stitch on Tunisian before and some of you kind of mentioned in the comments what you'd done and a few of you sent me photos and some suggestions at the Etsy shop. Thank you also for that. 
Um, and one of uh, one of the overarching suggestions was to use whatever you do, um, like the Tunisian simple stitch, let's say, if you're going to use the Tunisian simple stitch as your canvas, which this is, again, 10 foundation chains by 10 rows, um, and then a single crochet border. The recommendation is to use a thinner yarn for the actual cross stitch than the yarn weight that you used for the canvas, which makes all the sense to me because if you're doing, if you've ever done counted cross stitch, you're usually using, you usually take embroidery floss and like split it. You don't usually use it as, as the thickness, the six ply that it comes in. You usually split it into three ply, sometimes even two or one if you're doing like tiny little detail stuff. So um, this is a size four medium weight acrylic yarn, just like the Tunisian uh, tutorial we did on Friday. And I've got size three lightweight or DK weight yarns for my actual embroidery. So I've got some red, some yellow, and two different shades of green. I'm guessing I probably only need like three yards tops of the red and like less than a yard for the other three colors. So I'm not gonna need much. If you were gonna try a little bit of cross stitch, um, this is this is extreme scrap territory. <laughs> so that's the plan. We will see how this goes. Welcome everybody. And um, also gotta say a couple thank yous. My gosh, this is like the longest intro. Um, <laughs> thank you, Maria. And thank you, Esther. Both of you were picking up patterns at the Etsy shop earlier. And Nico, Nico gifted a membership. <laughs> Before we got going, so thank you very much, Nico, our gifting ninja, and Mr. and Stitches is actually here. Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, so I got my coffee. I got some water just in case. Big smiles. Let's uh, let's let's channel a little sunshine here and uh, circle of inspiration. Let's go, guys. All right. So, like I said, this is my canvas. It is Tunisian simple stitch. It is ten chains by ten rows information on that is in the description box. So if anybody pops in later and says what's going on, you can point them to the description box. Now, a um, couple things I've already noticed. So I'm totally new to this. I am experimenting as I go. I thought it might be kind of fun um, to do this together. So I know some of you have done this and are probably like gonna roll your eyes at some of the things I do in today's, today's stream, which is perfectly okay. But I thought we might actually have a few laughs watching me try to do this i've i know how to cross stitch and i know how to crochet but i've never cross stitched on crochet so um com complete noob in this little crossover hobby world uh so right away one of the things i did was i created you can see my little black corners on my graph here i marked out a grid of 10 by 10 so 100 squares 10 by 10 perfect square graph grid and then i built my little strawberry into the middle of it. So I sketched it down, colored it in, and already I I only used, uh, I didn't use the full 10 high rows. So row 10 of my grid is blank. Now this isn't single crocheting. I'm not, I don't really have to worry about anything like that, but I do know that um, I don't, I won't have anything in my 10th row. So I don't need to worry about trying to put anything into that 10th row. Also, it's 10 um, columns across, but I have two blank columns on either side because it's a narrow strawberry, which is also good because I noticed that even though I did 10 by 10 stitches by 10 rows, uh, which gives it kind of an elongated look, even with the border, which is why our Tunisian stitch sampler on Friday is 10 foundation chains by eight rows because that just makes a nicer square. Um, also, I use the five and a half millimeter hook for this as well. Um, because of the nature of Tunisian, 10 stitches translates more to nine stitches. Um, so for example, I'm hoping I can show you guys this. I have a definite stitch to work across on the right hand side. But by the time you get over to the left hand side, because that vertical bar, that's the indicator of the Tunisian simple stitch is like right at the edge. I don't have a stitch after that. So 10 Tunisian simple stitches gives me 10 vertical bars, but only gives me like nine flat spots in between those vertical bars in which to put my stitches. So technically I already think I should have started with 11 foundation chains just so I would have 
I would have 11 vertical bars and the bars sit right at the very sort of extreme edges of the piece of fabric. But then I would have the little flat part. I would have 10 of those in between. So because when you're cross stitching, you need to work on the actual square or you want to actually work across the square. Am I making sense? I hope so. Um, I already am short a column of squares just because of the nature of this. So <laughs> that's, that's what I think. Cause when I look at it I'm like, well, I'm going to work into the little, the little bits between the vertical bars. That's where I'm going to put my X's. Um, I'm already short a column because that's just the way the it worked out. Now, ding, ding. Oh my gosh. I'm going to sunshine and lemons. Oh my gosh. That is such a cute name. <laughs> Welcome to Obaka. Thank you. Thanks for joining the family. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the madhouse. Uh, this is the, this is, so I've got two completely empty columns on either side of my strawberry so I can still fit it in, but I think now it's going to look like my strawberries off side. This is an experiment, but um, anyway, so I, that's issue number one, I think, um, that I've detected. So uh, <laughs> I have to now decide where I'm going to put my my two middle bottom stitches because that's what I'm going to base the, the rest of my strawberry off of. Um, so yeah, my two bottom middle squares are going to eventually look like they're not in the very middle of my canvas. Since this is just for experimentation, that's fine. But uh, something for me to keep in mind, and you too, if you're gonna try this down the road, something for you guys to keep in mind as well, if you're gonna make yourself a canvas using Tunisian Simple Stitch. And I'm going to try and look a little bit at the, the chat. Um, it's small, <laughs> so if you see me squinting and looking off to the side, I'm just sort of popping into the chat to sort of see if I can see anything. Um, but uh, Nico, <laughs> Holy cow, Nico. Thank you very much. Nico just gifted 20 memberships. Thank you so much, Nico. Oh my gosh. Uh, let me see if I can catch this. Ah, 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 it's moving so quickly. Sylvia, Wraith, Susan, Rita, Penelope, um, Beverly, Castle Goddess, Kathy, Ellen, Lisa, uh, Cookies, 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 that's cute, <laughs> Sugar Plum, Cheryl, Michelle, Kristen, Catherine, Jody, Erin, Joanne, Lauren, Lonnie, Robin. Congratulations! Holy cow, that's a lot. And thank you so much, Nico. Oh my golly. Okay, here we go. Let's try this. So I'm going to start with my red because it's the most that it's the most color I'm using and it also allows me to create a pretty decent um, structure and border that reminds me of where I need to put all my other little colors in. So I'm going to start with my red color. I'm going to cut um, a length of like probably, probably about a yard because I don't want to do anything too much longer than that. It'll be too much sort of to wrangle. So I'm going to start with a yard of red. So this is my strawberry color. I'm going to thread it up and I'm going to use my yarn needle. Um, I don't I have darning needles, but I just, for the sake of being able to get through my fabric easier and not have to worry about trying to restring my yarn, I'm going to stick with my yarn needle. Plus it's pretty skinny and I think it'll work okay. So based on my canvas, this down here is this, this little sort of like helpful gap where I can sort of see where I put my border on and it kind of tugs down my, my foundation row a little bit. That helps remind me that that's the bottom. So I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to pick the two, what look like the two most middle stitches. Again, because I did 10 columns and not 11, it's going to look slightly offside, but I don't really mind. So I'm going to start by doing, I'm going to work kind of from the bottom up and I'm going to try and do it so that I have the least amount of carrying across the back of my little sampler. So anybody who sort of knows how to do cross stitch, you'll probably have much better language for this than me. Um, I haven't done cross stitch in 15 years, maybe. I'm trying to think I had a little tiny scrap of a bird that I, I think I finished off, but it's been not in any serious way. I haven't done cross stitch in like since high school, I don't think so. 
this is going to be interesting. Um, I expect many mistakes <laughs> and hopefully a lot of hilarity. And the mister has put the graph up on the, um, up on the screen for you, which is actually helpful for me because I can just sort of glance at it too, as opposed to looking at my little thing. So I'm going to bring my yarn in from the bottom and I'm going to, I'm going to use the, the vertical bars of the Tunisian stitch as sort of the edges of the little square. So in, in between the vertical bars of the Tunisian, you've got your two, your two horizontal loops of the, uh, of the stitch. I'm going to be making the X over top of that. So I'm going to be bringing my yarn in from the bottom corner of one of the vertical bars and doing like one line across and then the other one to the next square. And then I'm going to double back and do the other line going the other way. Um, as opposed to doing an X and then an X. And I think that's considered a more efficient way to do. You kind of do all of the the uh, diagonal bars leaning in one direction going all the way across on one row. And then you do all the other, the other diagonal lines going the other direction back on the same row. And then you kind of like try to get to like colored squares in uh, like in successive rows as neatly as you can without having to cross much distance on the wrong side of your canvas. I think. Cross stitchers, if you, I, I see, okay, I have a stitch, a cross stitch kit that's called Starry Night Bunny. That's Wraith. Oh my gosh, that sounds so cute. Krista did cross stitch once. <laughs> Big knot at the end of it. I really love cross stitch. I went through um, through a little phase in my life where I was collecting like cross stitch kits and cross stitch um, patterns, and because cross stitch translates nicely into knitting graphs, um, I was using them for a long time just for knitting graphs because I I before I crocheted in earnest, I did a lot of knitting, a lot of knitting. I was a knitter long before I was a crocheter. And I really, I really liked doing um, pattern, like, like Fair Isle style knitting, where I was always sort of like using graphs and whatnot. So I used, I, most of the, the cross stitch graphs I had wound up being used for knitting more than anything else. So I left a little tail on the back side, and I'm just doing the two bottom squares of the strawberry. So I went diagonal one way and then diagonal on the way back. So here we go. There's the first two X's. So my little strawberry, those are the two little bottom squares and the bottom middle. You see how it looks like it's a little offside just because of the nature of the Tunisian. Like I said, I probably should have done one more column. So if your graph is 10 by 10, like mine is, I recommend doing one extra column. So 11 by 10 rows. So if it's 10 by 10, do, a, do 11 foundation chains by 10 rows. And that will allow you to to put your image more in the middle. So that's the first thing I've noticed. Um, so the next row is uh, two red squares, a yellow square, so I have to skip that, and then a red square. So I'm gonna do my diagonals across. I'll show you what the diagonals on the way across look like as soon as I get them done. And then uh, this shouldn't take too long. This is another reason I wanted something a little like cute and small because I thought, well, you know, if we're going to hang out for an hour and I'm going to try this, I want to at least, I want to get the whole thing finished. So, you know, I love that feeling of you sit down, you do a project and it's done by the time you get back up that there I achieved something, you know. So there's all of my lines going now in one direction and I skipped the box that's going to be yellow or the little square that's going to be yellow according to the picture on the screen. I sort of did mostly cross stitch. I think I... I got a kit when I was young, like 11, but I don't think I actually tried it with any real intent until I was a little older. Um, so let's see here. All right, so that's, so far so good. So there's the three red boxes filled in on the second row. That's row two of the graph, but there's a missing box because that will be yellow eventually. I've still got lots of yarn left, so Sip of coffee. Buffering, it says. Are we good? Are we back? I think we're back. Okay. Little, little hiccup in the internet. 
little hiccup in the internet. Lots of hiccups in the internet. Uh, don't tell the squirrels, but I forgot to feed them this morning. So, <laughs> so I've got two rows of red done, row one and row two. And now I'm going to skip into row three and I'm going to do all of the lines going in one direction all the way back. This is a solid row of red, so that's easy peasy. And then I wonder if I can get all of the strawberry done with this one yard of yarn. We shall see. I kind of like, I kind of, I, I like, um, Mama and Stitches likes to, to crochet blankets and then weave yarn through it. Sort of like, I think she'll do double crochet. I think she'll do like rows of double crochet and then she'll weave yarn through it to give, give it that, like that woven rug kind of look or woven tapestry kind of look. I really like that. I like anything where you take crochet and you kind of do extra stuff to it. Like you improve, improve upon it. Can I say that? Can I say improve upon it? So this is one on either side. So this, this is six little X's of red. So now, so I've done the six lines going in one direction and now I'm going to turn around and go back the other direction. Now, why is that? Should I have? I'm going to take that out. I've got a long line I don't need. I thought I finished over there, but I'm foolish. So see, see this line? I started my lines from the wrong side. I don't need all of that extra yarn. So I'm going to take it out. <laughs> this is Jada in real time figuring out. <laughs> Yeah, I don't need that. Okay. I'm just, I'm being picky. When I, when I, when I do something, I want to try and at least give it my best shot at doing it mostly right. Um, I don't mind making mistakes as you can clearly see, but if I do make a mistake and I catch it at a different, decent time, I'll take it out. I'll take it out. Cause I'm like, well, why leave it there? If I know what I did, I may as well take it out and try it again. So carefully taking it out. I'm using my needle to like just grab the loops from the front and then the back. All right. And you know, I should have known that. Why would I have started from the other side? Silly Jada. Okay. So that's that long line. I don't need that. I'm going to take that out and I'm going to start from the other side where I was supposed to start. This is why I'm using the yarn needle. Easy peasy. I knew this was going to be a thing. So I don't have to worry about constantly trying to thread a tiny little eyed needle. So here we go back. I'm going to do that same row with the leaning lines again, going first from right to left and then left to right, right to left and then left to right. Why? Because I'm right-handed. I'm assuming if you're left-handed, you probably just naturally would want to start on the left side and work to the right. Uh, X's are mirror images, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Cookie's asking what I used for the base. So this is Tunisian Simple Stitch. So if you're just arriving, this is a Tunisian Simple Stitch canvas. The notes on it are in the description box. And uh, it's also based on the tutorial we did on Friday, which is also linked in the description box. So I'm just using Tunisian Simple Stitch. Already, I did a 10 by 10, 10 by 10 canvas, but I'm really thinking I should have done uh, 11 by 10, so 11 stitches by 10 rows, just so I would have that extra column of uh, flat bits that would make it look a little more like even, so my strawberry would look a little more centered, but you know, I'm not, this is, this is just a, a learning process for me. Um, I like to kind of figure things out on my own. Like I know, I know how to Tunisian crochet. I know how to cross stitch. So I want to try and figure out what works best, what doesn't, uh, for myself before I, you know, go diving into a book or something to see kind of what other people have done. Because I like, I, I'm, I'm like that about everything. I want to try and figure it out on my own first. I don't know. I guess that makes it stick in my head a little bit better. Okay. That's better. So that is now Row three, row three is all red. I've done all six little cross stitches. 
And that's what the back looks like so far. So I'm trying to keep the back as neat and tidy as possible. Um, I have a missing square on the front because that's going to be yellow according to my little um, graph that I made. And now, quick sip of coffee, I'm into row four. Row four has a little yellow dot, but the strawberry doesn't ever get any wider than this now. So my strawberry is only ever six stitches across. It's a pretty narrow strawberry. And uh, so I'm gonna start with, so now that, I wanna make sure I don't, I wonder if I should. So because I finish right below where I wanna start in the next box, I wanna make sure that I don't put my, my hook, my needle through, I might do my X's going in the other direction. No, wait, that'll look different. But no, no, it won't. Will it? Maybe it will. Yeah, back up and try that again. Carrie! Thank you, Mr. and Stitches. I hear the bell. Carrie, with a $5 super chat. Thank you so much, Carrie. Carrie says, just wanted to thank you and the Mr. for all you do for this great community. Thank you. And yes, you guys really are a great community. Um, I was just saying to the Mr. this morning that, uh, especially in March, <laughs> We need you guys <laughs> to help keep us inspired. Um, it is just such a, it's just, I know it's this time of year. I mean, it took me all the way into my forties to recognize that I get, I get like when, it, when, when March comes around. So it's not me, it's the weather. Plus we just had the time change and I don't know about you, but that is still affecting me. I can't stand the whole daylight versus standard nonsense. So we, we, we lost an hour because we sprung forward last week and it has still got me kind of messed up. I'm still looking at the clock going, that can't be the right time. And it isn't the right time. In fact, we are, <laughs> we've all lost an hour. Um, so I, I, I don't know. It all kind of combines to make kind of a, um, a not, not so great time of year. So, uh, I know a lot of you are kind of struggling with finding some inspiration right now, even though Easter is like a couple weekends earlier than it normally is. It's at the end of this month. Um, and it's fun to make stuff for Easter. I usually like to look forward to making easter e things because I love pastels and it gives me an excuse to pull out all my pastel yarn. I went through a phase, uh, I went through a crochet phase where I just wanted lots and lots of pastels. Um, so it's, it's, even though that's there, it's, you're, you know, you could be, you could be crojoed out. You've got, September is like back to school, getting ready for the autumn. Then you've got Thanksgiving, you've got Halloween, you've got Christmas. Then you've got the winter, which gives you ample reasons to crochet blankets and hats and scarves and mitts and all those things. And then boom, you land on the spring. And I think as a, as a crafter, part of us is like, well, I, I want to make something. Like that urge to make things never goes away. But the it's gonna get warm out. Like, what do I want to do with yarn? Mister and Stitches is ringing a bell, and I can't see anything. So, one moment, please, while I try to find out why it's not. Ah, Mister and Stitches. <laughs> Thank you, Mister and Stitches. Mister and Stitches has just gifted five memberships. Um, Kathy, yarning for a smile. That's so cute. Uh, Don, Tamika. Christina, congratulations. Welcome to the family and welcome back to the family. Mr. and Stitches gifting some, <laughs> gifting some memberships. Thank you. That was really sweet. Okay. Um, so yeah, March stinks uh, to sum it all back up. And it's sometimes it's hard to get your crojo back when it's like spring and you're thinking, all I want to do is think about outside and warm weather and nice springy things. And you know, what do I want to, I don't need to make a hat right now. Um, What's the point? What's the point of, of crocheting? Well, I, I, I find when I get to that point and I need to be crafty, I try to go sideways like I'm doing today. I'm trying a little bit of cross stitch on crochet because if this kind of jump starts my creativity and I feel like, uh, oh, oh, that might be kind of fun. That, like that's something new. I haven't tried that yet. Um, then, uh, I don't know. Sometimes that can spark something else. So that can make me think of another project I want to finish or another project I want to enhance, you know, stuff like that. So that is hopefully the aim of today, not to mention like watching me try to figure this out because now I'm, I'm realizing that I need to put a, I need to start 
stitches going back in the same direction directly above the last stitch I just finished and I'm not sure how to do that without it wanting to pull back out again so I'm thinking do I start it from oh maybe I'll just start it from the nope that will have a double what do I do how do I manage this does anybody have any suggestions for so just to explain what I'm doing um, I finished my last stitch my and then I now I want to turn around and go back the other way with us with an X directly above that one but normally where I would bring my yarn back out from I've already just I just finished there so um, I don't if I pull my yarn back out through the same place it will undo that X so should I start at the top and do my my crosses like that will change the way they, they're gonna look different Maybe, maybe I'll do one in one direction and then I'll do the rest. Okay. Oh, see, it fell out. That's okay. I think I've got it figured out. I'm just going to start the cross from the top to the bottom corner as opposed to the bottom corner to the top. And then I'll do the rest of them bottom corner, top, bottom corner, top. I think I'm going to do it that way. That way it won't want to come out on me. So, and all my, my crosses <laughs> will be in the same direction. Kay Berry, thank you so much for picking up a couple patterns. Barbara! Barbara's been a member for seven months. Um, thank you very much, Barbara, with a membership milestone. Hi, Barbara. Welcome, welcome. All right, everybody. I think I got it. I'm going to do the X from the top to the bottom as opposed to the bottom to the top. So there we go. Solves that little problem. And then I'll do the rest in the usual way. Bottom corner to the opposite top corner. Bottom corner to the opposite top corner. Oh, wait. I didn't. wasn't supposed to do that one. Pay attention to the graph, Jada. Pay attention to the graph. <laughs> All right, pulling that out. Okay, so I'm on row four, working bottom up. So where's my little pen? Use this. Uh, this is the square that I'm on right here, this red one. And then I've got to skip one for the yellow and then do four in red. So skip one for the yellow and then do four in red. Okay, back on track, everybody. So, um, I see Penelope asked a question. So this is, this is what I did just to reiterate because I finished. So I finished row three, the last stitch of row three came down from, um, bottom left corner finished in the top right corner of that square. So the next red square I was going to start would be directly on top of that. And I have been doing all of my squares right to left diagonal and then left to right other diagonal. I've been starting them all in the bottom right corner, top left, bottom right, top left, bottom right, top left, and then bottom left, top right, bottom left, top right. So that's how I've been sort of doing my X's. But if I end a row in the top right hand corner of a square, and then I need to start the next row directly above that one, I would be starting in the bottom right corner, but I just finished a square in the top right corner and that's basically the same place. So if I tried to do it there, it would either, I'd either have to split the yarn to make it want to stay or it would just come right back out. So instead of starting it in the bottom right corner, I started it in the top left corner, brought it down to the bottom right corner and then did the rest of the row, bottom right, top left, bottom right, top left, bottom right, top left, and so on. Um, and of course you're looking at me and I'm sitting opposite you. So that's going to sound confusing, but I hope you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, basically you don't want to have your yarn want to come out. Um, so you don't want to go in and then back out through the exact same little space in your, in your, um, your canvas. Uh, so I had to change the direction of that one diagonal. So from top to bottom as opposed to bottom to top, but the rest of the squares, I'm going to do the usual way. Lorraine. Hi, Lorraine. Lorraine made it. Lorraine has been a member for 39 months. Thank you, Lorraine. Lorraine says, huge thank you, Jada and Mr. for all you do for us. Much love. 2.24 a.m. down under. Oh, that's early. Oh my gosh, that's early. And I know from, I just popped into the chat before we got going, like half of you didn't even sleep last night either. So see, March stinks. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here, Lorraine. Lorraine's uh, up in the middle of the night, <laughs> keeping us company. That is, uh, that is early. Oh my, 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 my. 
Okay, I'm on my way back now. So I'm doing my other diagonal crosses. And I'm skipping that second square. So just so you can sort of see, like there's me coming out at the bottom corner. And then I'm going, I'm crossing up to the top corner and making the X. And I'm skipping that second last box because that's going to be yellow. And I don't know, I think this is looking not too bad so far. Not too bad. It's a little off, off center because I should have done 11 stitches and not 10 for a 10 by 10 grid because of the nature of Tunisian simple stitch. Um, but so far that looks like the bottom of a strawberry, I would say. Looks like, it looks like a little strawberry in the graph there. <laughs> Pat's cell phone back. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> still going. So that was row four complete. Bum, 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 bum. Row five is now kind of a reverse of row four for me. It's four solid red squares or solid red X's, a yellow X, and then another red X. So going in the other direction. So this time I'm gonna do, I just finished. So I'm gonna do the same thing because I'm putting an X, because, so I finished row four on that little red box right there. Because my last diagonal was bottom left to top right, and now I wanna start this X directly on top of it, I can't go bottom right to top left because I just came out in that same spot. So I'm gonna to go top left to bottom right, and then I will do the rest of the X as normal. Bottom right, top left, bottom right, top left. That way, if you look at the back of my my cross stitch that way you'll see that like i came out here well that's that's exactly the same place i want to start my next one so i can't so i want to come in i want to cross up and then come down so that i don't end up pulling it out it works it works there's a the back of cross stitch is always a little bit messy but who cares what's the ding 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 oh my goodness i'm missing stuff i'm missing stuff Vima! Hi, Vima! Vima has made it. Vima's been a member for 41 months. Thank you, Vima. Vima says, hi, Jada. Love this year's calendar blanket. Thank you for everything you do. Love the way the collar is giving the sweater totally different look. I love crochet collars. Thank you, Vima. Um, I saw an article headline. I didn't read the article, but um, I saw a headline zip by in my news feed last night that said that Crochet collars are like the in thing this year. And I thought, well, I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> so I made this one like, like 10 years ago. Um, but we have a tutorial for this. So if you've never made yourself a crochet collar or you want to give it a try, um, I love them. They are such a fun, relatively quick project. You can do it with a, a size three crochet thread, three or four, what they would sometimes call fashion thread, crochet thread, not yarn. Um, and like a two millimeter hook, two and a half millimeter hook, doesn't have to be a small hook either. So it's really not that difficult. And uh, all you need is that and a little button. And they really do finish off an outfit quite nicely. I, I noticed that those big 80s collars are back in now too. So I might, I might try my hand at something a little bit bigger because they're fun. I love putting a collar on over a sweater. Um, and there's all sorts of stuff going on here. Goodness gracious. Katie, member for seven months. Hi, Katie. Thank you. Katie says, love this community. I look forward to the lives. I love this community too. You guys are very good for the soul. <laughs> and Connie, Connie has gifted a membership. Thank you so much, Connie. Connie has gifted a membership to Amanda. Amanda won it. Congratulations, Amanda. Welcome back to the family. You guys, this is wonderful. Okay, back to my little cross stitch. Sip of coffee first. Almost done. Mm. Good cup of coffee and uh, water. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. So on to row five. So I've got to do four blocks of red, four X's in red, an X in yellow, and then an X in red again. So instant stitches is ringing the bell, but what happened? Katie, oh my gosh, Katie, thank you so much. Katie's just gifted 10 memberships. Ms. O'Brien, another gifting ninja. Oh my gosh, and let's see here. We've got Lulu, 
Debbie, Linda, Tracy, Deb, Lawrence, Kate, Paula, Catherine, Karen. Congratulations, guys. You all won a gifted membership from Katie. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Wonderful community here. Um, if you're new to Silk or Vicuña, we will make sure we post the login information to the um, members website over on our webpage so you can get a copy of Friday's pattern. We put that up for, for members. Um, and if you are just a subscriber here, um, we have a great website with free patterns and really funky tools and useful stuff for everybody to use, uh, www.jadainstitches.com. So if you ever want to check that out or have a cup of coffee, we've got useful tools too over on our website, like um, yarn conversion charts. We've got hook size conversion charts. We've got um, like really useful tool information. So if you're trying to work your way through a pattern, for example, and maybe you've got like a UK pattern, but you're more comfortable with US terminology or vice versa, we even have like a little um, quick translation chart there for the, the, the very common stitches. So if that's something that like you, you know, think, oh, I, I kind of need that or I, I want to, it's like, it's a good little reference area, I guess. We were trying to, to put together as many references as we can in that one spot. Um, <clears throat> wow, what else? My, oh, you did a you did a poll. Is that what the bell's for, mister? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> for the record, this wasn't my idea. This was Krista's Are you idea. still in pajamas or are you dressed? <laughs> Good question. Dressed, 54%. PJs, 41%. Only underwear, 3%. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the lurkers. Those are the lurkers. So half and half. Half of you are dressed and half of you are in PJs. What about the people who are half in PJs and half dressed? <laughs> oh my gosh ronald and kathy hi hi there hey cousins hello adopted family Wee! we can't say it enough what a wonderful way to spend a monday makes the week great also i love you both stay sweet and crafty we are grateful for this connection with you kathy and ron thank you guys so much <laughs> thank you again awesome community you guys like I walk around the house with a giant smile on my face usually after our live streams because I inevitably laugh. You always come up with something that cracks me up. I can hear him giggling, so I know you guys are having a good time while I'm busy trying to like work my way through a project or something. So thank you guys. Thank you all so much for being here. Especially today, you're watching me struggle my way through some cross stitch. Um, I don't know, this is actually coming out I think a little bit better than I anticipated. I say, hopefully. I'm almost to the point where I'm going to need to cut a little bit more red yarn, so that's okay. I want to leave a length on the back for weaving in, so I might I might get to the end of this row. No, I think I'm going to have to... So since this is like yarn and not thread, this is just an experiment. So I'm not really, I don't really have any extreme plans for this. So I might not worry so much about like, I'm going to weave my tails in to, just to make sure that they're neat and tidy and they don't want to come out. But I, I don't, I don't usually, I'm not going to worry about best practices for making sure my tails don't want to undo or creating knots or anything. I might knot them later. I don't know. I don't have any plans for this. So uh, if you cross stitch with yarn on crochet, how do you handle your tails? I'd like to know. Please uh, please let me know either in the chat or in the comments section because uh, I'm curious. I, I think I'm probably just gonna like create some simple little, like I might tie these ends into knots and then maybe weave them in a little bit, but I don't know what I'm gonna use this on. Like if I end up doing something with this, I'm not sure that I will. This is just practice for me. But if I, I, if I did end up doing using this for something, I'd want to make sure that my tails didn't want to come undone. Also, I probably would want to make sure that the back wasn't showing. So, I don't know. Penelope says, Jada, is there a way to connect the corners of the stitches? I'm leaving the vertical bar of the Tunisian crochet in between. I'm letting that kind of separate the stitches. I'm doing that on purpose. 
If you wanted to work over top, then you would just have to kind of consistently pick a spot to anchor your, your stitches every single time. But I'm specifically leaving those vertical bars open because I, I wanted to sort of see them in between the X's. Does that make sense? Um, but if you wanted to work right over top of them, you would just have to consistently pick a spot just to the left or just to the right of those vertical bars to always anchor the, the corners of those stitches in. Kevin Moore, welcome to Alpaca. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> welcome to the family. Welcome back to the family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Um, okay, so I think I've finished, I have, I've finished one, two, three, four, five rows. I've got, I've left space, I've left <laughs> squares open for my yellow yarn, which I'm going to be going in and doing later. Can you hold it steady for a second? I'm going to do a zoom in so everyone can actually see the stitches. Sure. I will hold steady. Can you hold it in front of your chest, sort of? Yeah, right about there. Let's zoom in for everyone. I like the way cross stitch looks because it reminds me of like old fashioned things. You can see the X close up. Looking good. Yeah, you can see the X's. Yeah. All right. You can always freeze freeze frame that on the video. Yeah. Also, for those of you that aren't aware, if you're on a tablet or a phone, you can actually do the pinch zoom um, maneuver on YouTube videos. So if you ever want to zoom in on a, a bit of the pattern, yeah, exactly. You can zoom in on a video and you can zoom right in on that stitch. Yeah. Or any video. Any video, as long as you're on your tablet or phone. What? Oh, right. Okay, so now I've moved on to, what are we on here? Row seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, this is row six of the little graph. I'm working bottom up. And this is just a row of straight red cross stitch squares. So I'm going to quickly go across first right to left, <clears throat> excuse me, and then left to right doing the cross in the other direction. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I remember thinking when I was little that, probably because I was little, and I was extremely impatient. <laughs> she says, pausing for effect. Um, I remember thinking that cross stitch just like it felt like it took too long, but it's probably because I was doing cross stitches that were a little, a little more involved than they needed to be. Like this is a <clears throat> 10 by 10 square. So there's only a hundred squares, but I'm not even using all hundred squares. So I probably should have been doing things that were this small and simplistic when I first started. And then maybe I might've wanted to stick with it. I think I was handed relatively small, but still kind of complicated um, cross stitch designs for for at least my my age group or maybe even my attention span. I feel like it could be me, but I feel like um, making crafts a little more approachable for kids continues to get better. Like people continue to make them a little more approachable or a little simpler or a little like cute, but like quicker. You know what I'm saying? Um, I definitely wanted something that felt intro level for today because I wanted to be able to get it done. I didn't want to have to f change color too many times. I didn't want to feel like I was fighting <laughs> with the fabric. This feels good. Hello, Chris. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Chris with a super chat. Thank you so much, Chris says, hi, Jada and Mr. and Stitches. I finally figured out how to super chat. <laughs> I love your show and this community. Thank you guys so much. We love this community too. I, I, I can't say it enough. You guys are hilarious. You are supportive. You are creative. Did I say hilarious? You guys make us laugh. Like, you, is humor not the best thing in the world? I swear. It, it, you know, when you have a couple of good laughs, it can literally bring the sun out. I, I mean, that's how I feel. So <laughs> thank you, guys. It's a reason that we're in stitches. We want to, we want to, we want to have a good 
we want to have a good time. And to me, part of having a good time means a good laugh. Uh, and if, it, if it's at my expense, I don't mind. <laughs> but I have to say, this is actually looking pretty good. And can I also say, when you're working the cross stitch, I'm just discovering this again, never done this before. Um, working the cross stitch on the Tunisian crochet makes the Tunisian crochet less inclined to roll. This is giving it um, a stiffness, a strength to the to the original crochet canvas that it didn't have before. So now it, it doesn't want to roll from the bottom up. So that's cool too. Um, that's a nice little, little thing I didn't know was going to happen. I'm sorry that this looks like it's off, but maybe I can add a little something to the side to make it look balanced. I don't know. Again, uh, if it's a 10 by 10 grid, I recommend one extra column of stitches if you're going to do the Tunisian simple stitch as your graph uh, canvas, because it gives you one extra row of column of the flat perpendicular part of the Tunisian simple stitch, which is where you're putting your X. At least that's where I'm putting my X because I want the vertical bars to square in the little X's. Once again, you can see the white vertical bars of the canvas. I'm not crocheting or cross stitching over top of them. I want my X's in between them. And because I'm putting the X's in between the vertical bars, I really did need one extra column of Tunisian crochet. So even though it's technically 10 stitches by 10 rows, I really should have made it 11 stitches by 10 rows. And then that would have allowed me to put my image more in the center, but you learn as you go. Okay, so that is row one, two, three, four, five, six complete. So I'm moving into row seven. I am now closing in the top of my little strawberry. So I've got one red box. I have to skip two boxes and then my last red box. And that's it for my red yarn. So I'm going to go in one, create the cross, skip two boxes, make my last one. Trying not to pull tightly because I'm going to end up with a long cross of yarn to skip those two boxes. Oh my gosh. Wouldn't these be the cutest little patches? Like, you know how I'm always going, ah, I add an applique to something, you know? Wouldn't, wouldn't this be, wouldn't, oh my gosh. Okay, use Tunisian simple stitch, but do 11 stitches by 10 rows. That way you can kind of put it more in the center. Wouldn't this be the cutest little pocket on like a purse, like a bag, like, or, or even just a little patch, a little patch. If you made it in cotton, obviously, if you're going to add it to a project, make it the same, the same fiber. But wouldn't, wouldn't a whole bunch of these little patches be so cute on like, you've got like a blanket and it's seen some, some harder days and maybe there's a little hole and maybe you knotted off the yarns, but you never fix the hole patch. So cute. Oh my gosh. Pocket on a purse. So cute. I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to have to make a whole bunch of these. Okay, that's it for my red. Um, I'm just going to let that drape. I'm not going to, to knot off my yarns yet, but that is all of the red X's. I'm sorry, I'm still, I'm still jumping ahead to ideas. Anyway, that's all the red X's for the strawberry done. So that's rows one through six. One through six um, are the ones that had red X's in it. And now everything else is either the three yellow dots to highlight seeds in the strawberry or the greenery that is going to be the little leafy topper for the strawberry. So here we go. We had a little buffer in that Did we? Oh, okay. We're, we're, we're back. I'm just going to pop into the chat here. So we're, we're back. Oh my gosh. Ellen, did you mention, what did you, what did, Ellen, what did you mention earlier? Sorry, I'm only, I'm only half able to see the chat here today. Ellen, did you mention one of those earlier? That, yeah, it would absolutely be a great pocket or something. <laughs> Coast 
posters. That's a great idea. Kevin, yeah. Cell phone pocket. Penelope says she saw an oversized chair done all in pockets. Oh, that would be so cute. That's a good thing to do if you had pets wreck a pet, like wreck a, a favorite piece of furniture and you don't want to reupholster it. That would be really neat. Oh my gosh. Patch onto jeans. I would do that in cotton. On a jean jacket. Oh my gosh. That would be so cute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to have to make some more of these cute little designs. I'm like, I still, I know we did the Fair Isle last year, but I, I love graph stuff. I always have, again, because of the whole thing. I used to love doing knitting and changing colors and knitting and everything. Um, but my brain is still thinking in terms of graphs. Like I keep wanting to make more. So I'm going to keep making more. If you feel the urge to make something, make it. I'm going to trim my red yarn here. I'm just going to leave that little thing hanging. Um, I'm going to start with the, I'm going to finish the strawberry. So I'm going to do the yellow. I don't need much yellow. So I'm going to get eh, half a yard, half a meter of yellow and just do the three little squares that are on rows two, four, and five. So my skipped, um, all of my skipped white squares, there were three of them. I'm going to fill them in now with yellow. So I'm going to, I'm just, and I'm not going to snip my yarn because they're too close. So I'm just going to do the X on that one row, go to the next one, do the X on that row, go to the next one, do the X on that row. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to start at the one on row level two, level two, gamer, row two. I'm going to leave a little bit of yarn out the back for knotting or weaving in or whatever I decide to do here. I guess depending on how busy your cross stitched piece is you want to treat your tail ends differently like whether you just weave them in or if you actually knot them um, because you wouldn't want them coming undone all right that's one one little x made that's on line two row two um, i'm going to make the one on row four and I have to, my yarn's going to jump up a little bit like that. So I'm going to make sure I don't pull too tightly. And I'm actually really, <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. I might just for, for, for fun, once this is finished, since it's just an, a, like a, it was just a, a sampler, I might stitch the whole thing onto one of my big, beautiful baskets like this guy right here. Oh, because this one's all like greens and I feel like it could use a little something. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to do that. <laughs> all right, one more. So I didn't need much yellow. I cut way more than I needed, but it's always better to have a little bit more than you need. All right, so there's my three yellow cross stitches made. That completes the strawberry part of the berry. Now I just need to do the greenery. Okay, so I'm going to snip my yellow just so there's not a whole lot of it there. The back looks like an absolute nightmare, but I don't think that matters. Ah, how's that part of... Oh, there we go. So string, string, string. So I've got strings hanging, but the front looks good. I'm going to knot all of these tails together on the back because I am going to add this to my basket. So you're never going to see the back. So it can be as messy as it wants to be. So long as the front looks nice, that's all that matters. <laughs> all right. Uh, dark green first, then I'll finish it off with the light green. I have four X's to do, so I don't need much dark green. Maybe half a yard, half a meter. Um, all three of the dark, or I should say four of the dark green X's are stacked on top of each other. And then there's one kind of in the middle. Um, so that's rows seven, eight, nine. So green starts second X from the right on row seven. 
So I'm going to leave a little bit of green yarn out the back. That's just for knotting later. And then I'm going to, same thing, I'm going to do the, I'm going to complete the X's per row. So in row seven, I have one green X. Gee, when you start adding colors, it looks so cute. I'm so happy about that. Then I have another one directly above it and one to the side. So I will complete that row's worth of green X's first. And you can see something nearing its finish line and it's cute. It's kind of hard not to smile. So there's the two X's in row eight. And then I have one green X, dark green X in row nine. So I'll do that one. And that is it for the green. Again, I had way more than I needed. So there's the, the four dark green X's that's part of the leafy topper. They extend down into the main strawberry bit, as you can see on the graph there. And then the other highlighted ones <clears throat> are the lighter green, just to kind of give it like a little bit of depth, I guess. So a little bit of green yarn. I think I'll use even less than I did the last time. So a little bit less than half a yard. And it's rows seven, eight, and nine for the light green. So I'm gonna start on row seven, leave a little bit of that light green tail to the back. And then I will complete that light green X first since it's the only one on row seven. Ding, ding, ding. Lucy! Hi, Lucy! Lucy has gifted a membership. Thank you, Lucy. Who won it? Desiree! Congratulations, Desiree. Welcome back to the family. Marvelous. Thank you, guys. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay, so that's my first little light green X complete. So now rows one through six are completely finished. One through seven. I have rows eight and nine to complete, and it's just three more little light green X's. So I'm gonna work from right to left. So this next green X sits directly on top of, so it's getting kind of busy back here. But it doesn't matter because it's gonna hide. It's all in the back. So I can see how, I'm thinking here, if you were going to do a pot holder, for example, or a dishcloth, something that was only like a one piece, like with your, you could see both sides. I could see how if you were going to add cross stitch to a pot holder or a dishcloth, that it would make more sense to do an image that was simple by color. Like, so maybe you only needed one color, therefore there was less of this happening on the back of it because you don't want to look at that. But if you were going to do a more complicated color wise image on a pot holder, it might be worthwhile to, to just crochet up two exact same sized cloths, do the cross stitch on one and then sew or crochet the two main squares together so that all of that is sandwiched in between them. So you only see the nice bit. Nicole! Nicole has gifted a membership. Thank you so much, Nicole. And Adon's World won it. Congratulations. Welcome back to the family. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nico's wondering if I'm drinking straight up vodka today. I'm not drinking anything. This is this is this is me not drinking anything. <laughs> I'm You're uh, witnessing Jada high on crafting. I'm significantly much more boring when I when I do drink any <laughs> alcohol. It's I just kind of, I mellow out, I suppose. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm much more interesting if I'm high on crafting. <laughs> All right, so that is row eight complete. So that light green yarn is pretty light. Um, 
probably good that I did include it alongside the dark green because it kind of helps to to like the like the darker green will help to show the lighter green. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? One more, one more little X with the light green. You want to read uh, crochet with Diane's comment quick? Crochet with Diane. I have to go find it. Crochet with Diane. A whole summer full of projects with cotton yarn and cross stitch. Jada, we need to explore this more. You know what? I think we will do more of that. I love the idea of pockets for bags. I love the idea of, of little cross stitch patches for like jeans or jean jackets. I, I really like the idea of using them as a cute patch for an existing knit or crochet project that's developed a hole or a stretched out area or... Maybe there's a color change that you don't like on it or something. This is such a neat way to to add even more craftiness. Oh, we need another close up. Okay, hang on, let me just so finish this. The, let's do the front and the back. I'm almost finished. I'm just finishing off my last X, and there it is. Okay, so close up. Let me know if that's I will hold. So we've got, it now should look exactly like lower. the little, lower? lower. There you go, perfect. It should look exactly like the little uh, graph, or more or less. So this is gonna look maybe a little taller. The graph might look a little a little squished. Um, uh, maybe I'll give it a little bit of a, yeah. a shadow so you can see the green, the dark, the two tones of green there. Does that help? I don't know. Maybe if I turn it sideways. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fine the way it looks. Yeah? Okay. So there's there's lighter green and darker green in the uh, in the little leafy bit of the strawberry. Obviously, you can see the bright yellow seeds in the rest of the strawberry. And you can see what I mean when I say I should have done 11 stitches by 10 rows because the strawberry is sort of offside a little bit because of the nature of Tunisian crochet because I was putting my X's in between the vertical bars. So this is the back. Whoa. Real rat's nest. Um, Looks like the squirrels got a hold of the back. Now I've just dropped my yarn tails. That's where... what our internet looks like behind the scenes. Yeah, that's what that's what the internet yeah. looks like. So I think since I'm going to use this as a patch on a on a basket, just to add a little bit of fun to my basket, um, I'll stitch this on right now. I'm going to add it to the basket. I'm just going to knot the ends together. Not tightly, because I don't want to hurt the cross stitch on the right side of the... But I'm going to knot my little ends together, and then I'm just going to grab some white yarn, and I'm going to stitch it onto the basket, because I think that would be kind of cute. It's kind of a neat little way to use it. It was just... Um, it was just, like, a total okay. experiment. So, all right, so I'm going to just quickly... Take all of the, the ends that are closest to each other and just like give them a little granny knot. But um, I don't think I'm going to trim the ends really. Um, because I think, oops, come here. I will tie all my little ends together in just plain granny knots. Nothing too tight because I don't want to... Um, strain the cross stitch on the right side. So all I'm doing, I'm just taking two that are close to each other and I'm just tying a knot twice, three times if it doesn't feel like it's strong enough. And then I'm going to leave the tails because I don't think they matter much. Now, because this is kind of a cross stitchy this is a cross stitch thing. And because it's like the whole quaintness of it, in my opinion, is like you can, s the whole point of cross stitch is to see the stitches, right? Well, instead of using white yarn to sew this patch onto my basket, I'm going to use one of the colors, probably the red, because I think that stands out the most, to sew it onto my basket so that it looks like an old fashioned patch. I think I really like that idea. So I'm just gonna leave all of my tails to the back because I don't care. 
and I'm going to stitch it onto this basket. So let me empty the basket. And I'll get my other yarn out of the way. And let's do this. All right, give me your basket. So basket is now empty. Um, my front and my back are kind of the same. So I'll put it on this side. I'm going to just flatten my basket here. All right. I love it when something works. <laughs> this is going to be so cute. All right. I'm intentionally going to use red so that the stitching of actually sewing it on stands out because I like that idea. Um, so let me just cut myself enough yarn that I think I can make it all the way around. So what I usually do is I, I actually go along the length of the edge that I have to sew and then double that and then do it again for each side. So however many, like I always, I kind of, I do the length and then I double it. And then I, that usually is enough to do. I'm going to do a whip stitch. So here we go. Just so you can see what it looks like before I start sewing it down. I don't know if I can hold this and show you at the same time, but here we go. So I flattened my basket and I'm going to stitch this more or less in the middle. Um, and I'm going to use the red yarn to sort of and whip stitch it on. And I'm not going to pin it into place. I'm just going to hold it and kind of work flat. But I'm going to do that thing where I use the top facing loops of the basket so that I don't actually have to sew through the basket fabric. Um, I'm going to anchor Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to leave a little tail. When I get all the way back around, I'm going to knot the two ends together and then tuck them underneath the back of the patch on the actual basket. So here we go. I'm going to hold this in place. I'm going to work. Eh. So again, I'm going to see if I can show you this too. I am using the front facing loops of the basket how is that showing all right mister uh yes it is okay it um it looks good i can also just come up a little yeah. closer so i'm gonna use the front facing loops of the basket i'm gonna sew through each stitch along the edge of the little sampler and then i'm just gonna keep making sure as i go that it hasn't moved on me and that shouldn't take too much time at all Didn't even need that stitch. All right, let's take it out. Okay, so simple whip stitch. You're just always going in the same direction and the stitch goes over top of the edge of your, in this case, patch. And I know you can't fully see what I'm doing, but as soon as I get a few more uh, stitches done, I will, I'll pick it up and I'll show you. Maybe I'll work on my lap. That might be a bit better. There we go. Okay, I'm going to do all the way across the top and then I will pick it up and I'll show you guys where I'm at. 
I actually enjoy sewing. I like hand sewing. Hand sewing always makes me feel like I'm a little more in control. Um, and a whip stitch is nice and quick. Okay, so here we are pretty much across the top. That looks... Is that one kind of crooked? That one's kind of crooked. It's also easy to take out yarn sewing. Taking out thread sewing is a little more complicated. There we go. Okay, so, so far so good. I'm really going for that. Why does this make me think of jam jars? Gingham and jam jars? <laughs> yeah, it looks like the jam. I'm, I'm going for that gingham and jam jar, you know, on the country kitchen table kind of thing. Um, so I like the red stitching on the white patch on the green basket. I mean, classic, right? Red, white, and green. Those things are all kind of opposite each other on the color spectrum. All right. So now I'm going to work down the other side. And I'm going to pick up my knee. I like to work on my knees. Anybody else like this? Like I'm just gonna slip a slipper off, stick my, my foot kind of like up on the chair and then like work on my knee. Anybody else do this? I like to be as close to my face as possible. And that's gonna go there. Also, it kind of lets me sit straight up and down as opposed to hunching over is probably better in the long run for my posture. <laughs> so I'm just grabbing the top facing loops of the basket. Uh, I'm keeping it as flat as possible. This is really, this is really cute. I am quite, quite pleased with this. I will say, um, I think once I, I kind of consider how this little sampler went today. I'll make some additional notes in the description box of the live stream uh, underneath where we've got the pattern notes. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to leave the pattern notes. So I want to leave exactly what I did, which was 10 foundation chains by 10 stitches or 10 rows, 10 stitches by 10 rows plus a single crochet border. I'm gonna leave that up, but I'm gonna include the notes that I feel that it would probably be better with the 11 stitches by 10 rows. So I want to leave what I did there, but I'm going to include what I think would make it better. So if you guys decide to try one down the road, um, you know, you can try both, see what you think, but you'll have the benefit of what I think would probably work better to start with as opposed to, you know, doing what I've done and then going, yeah, Jada, I think 11 stitches by 10 rows would be better. <laughs> oh, this is cute. This is so stinking cute. And then, of course, <clears throat> the more you get it stitched down, the faster you can go because you don't have to keep worrying about it moving or anything on you. And all of that mess on the underside of the cross stitch is hidden. So almost around the corner.
couple more stitches here. All right, so now I want to just knot together my two original ties. Do I do one or one more stitch? Yeah, I'll do one more stitch. You have a milestone. Yeah. Goodness gracious, I am so into this. Sylvia! Hi, Sylvia! Sylvia's been a member for six months. Thank you, Sylvia. She says, making two baby blankets using your pixie blanket pattern, Jada. How one is so cute. I love it. This is my sixth baby blanket using your sweet pattern. Thank you for your creativeness. Wow, sixth. Wow. Well, thank you very much. I, I, I really like that pixie pattern. It's another nice, cute, small, repetitive one that you don't have to think too hard about. I like the way that one looks. All right, so I'm gonna tie the corner ties in a little knot. I'm gonna trim my sewing yarn because I wound up needing much less, which is fine. And then I'm going to just weave them in underneath those stitches so that they disappear. All right, let me just finish weaving those in. I grabbed both tails and just another reason I like these wool needles with the giant eye loops. All right, so I'm gonna pull that back out so that it doesn't show, ah, okay. That is cute. There we go. A little patch for my basket. <laughs> I like it. It really looks like it's got that that really cute little old fashioned kind of thing going. Um, I sewed it on with a different colored yarn. So the patchiness sort of really stands out like I want it to look like I've kind of patched it. I really like that. I think that is so cute. I think this will now become my basket of of uh, patches. So if I do more of these um, like attempts, like like I want to try out a graph or maybe I want to try out sort of like cross stitch on on a different stitch or whatever. I'll just add all of those trial patches to this basket. I think that would look so cute. And then I'm going to make them kind of like higgledy piggledy. So it looks like kind of patched like a, an old blanket or something. Uh, so I think that'll be really That'll be really cute. Not to mention, it's a good way to use up your experiments. They look intentional. And then it will help to make this basket a little stiffer. Um, I use this basket a lot, so it's very like pursy at this point. Um, but I usually have it so stuffed full of stuff, it stands upright anyway. Um, I love these big, beautiful baskets. I've made so many of them over the years. But I think I really like that. I like that, that cross stitch patch on the basket. And even though it's obviously the strawberry is kind of like off center because of, of um, because of how I miscalculated, I really, I did 10 stitches by 10 rows because the graph was, was 10 by 10 boxes. But because Tunisian crochet isn't counted in the same way that single crochet is, like you're counting the bars, not so much the stitches in between, but it's the stuff in between the bars that you're putting your X's on. I really should have done 11 stitches by 10 rows. Ooh. Uh, question from Mayla. Yeah. <clears throat> bum, 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 bum. Uh... <laughs> I'll just read it out to you. Okay. Could this be done on the graphs we used for last year's blanket? Yeah, the graphs... Could this be done with so if you were going to use the Fair Isle style graphs we did, those graphs are a two to one ratio. This is a one to one ratio. So if you were going to use those graphs, absolutely you could. You just have to remember that you have to do two rows of cross stitch for each row of the Fair Isle graph. So if you so row one of the Fair Isle graph might be like you know, uh, nine white, two blue, nine white. You'd have to do that twice. Nine white, two blue, nine white. 
nine white, two blue, nine white. So you would be doing two, two rows of cross stitch for each row of the Fair Isle style because they're a two to one ratio. Otherwise, if you only do one row of each, like if you do one row of cross stitch for each row of the Fair Isle graphs, the, the image will compress. It'll look short and possibly like, it'll, it'll look compressed because, because it's, um, the cross stitch isn't a tall stitch. The cross stitch is like a perfect little square. I hope that makes sense. So yes, you can use those um, uh, graphs for cross stitch. You just have to remember that you're doing two rows of cross stitch for each row that's represented by the graph. Same thing if you were going to use those graphs for single crochet. You'd have to do two rows of single crochet for each row on the Fair Isle style graphs because the Fair Isle style graphs are two to one ratio. This little guy is a one to one ratio. So you can use it for knitting, single crochet and cross stitch. Danielle, member for 28 months. Thank you, Danielle says, I made a big, beautiful basket, but I can't find it. <laughs> Guess it wasn't big enough. <laughs> um, how, uh, oh, you must have it stuffed under something in a closet, under a bed maybe, perhaps under the couch. Maybe it's so full of stuff that you can't see the basket for the stuff in it. Been there myself. <laughs> um, I've made, I'm looking at four big, beautiful baskets right now. I know I have more. I think I've got another one in the closet. Plus I've made a few and given them away. Uh, they're my go-to. If I've got yarn to use up and it's ugly and I'm done with it, I sit down and I make a basket because I will always use a basket. I will always need a basket. And if I'm not using it as a basket, it makes a really like stylish bag, so. Okay, dokie. I'm going to pop into the chat briefly here. If anybody's got questions, I don't know if I'm like, if I can even answer them <laughs> based on what I've just done. Um, I, I am going to add my notes, uh, my, my what I feel I can improve upon notes into the description box. And I am definitely going to come up with some more cute little, super simple, small graph images. Um, I feel like I can be a little more creative with this concept uh, in the 10 by 10 row because I can use more color. I was restricted when we were designing the Fair Isle style counter blanket. I was really trying to keep the main the main Fair Isle style graphs that we used in the blanket project. I was really trying to confine them to only the use of two colors, a color A and a color B. And of course, if you wanted to mix in other colors, there, were, there was always that opportunity, but I was really trying to restrict the image to be, to stand on its own and not have to rely on color to tell you what it is. But with this, with cross stitch, changing color is part of the fun. So I feel like I can be a lot more dynamic with designs in this tiny little space. Hi, Masha. Thank you. Masha with a little super chat. Thank you so much. Um, no words, but just a, just a very sweet little <laughs> super. Thank you. What? Oh my gosh. Did I miss Masha's mouse? Oh, wait, she said it twice. She said it twice. Lucy, holy cow. Okay. So first of all, Lucy, hi there. Lucy's been a member for 12 months. Thank you, Lucy, with a membership milestone. Says, I'm going to make a new market bag now and cross stitch a cute strawberry on it. Thank you for the inspiration. Love that idea. I, I want to see it. Please send me a photo at the Etsy shop. Lucy, that's so cute. So Masha, with a generous super chat. Thank you. Masha, with a generous super chat. Again, thank you. I had a really awful day. Happy to see you. Thanks. Well, I hope it feels better. I hope you all feel better. Masha, you're not alone, honey. I feel like... We're all kind of got the super grumps on. I don't know what that is. I I think it's it's a combination of, well, let's see. Here in Canada, it's March, which is crummy. It's tax season. Whoopee, that makes everybody in a good mood here. <laughs> um, the weather is starting to do that elastic-y thing where it goes like super hot and then super cold. Um, that makes people sick. So that's not fun. I don't know. I think it's just a crummy time of year. And... Why is Easter so early? Like Easter is just so early this year. We just had like St. Patty's Day, if that's a thing. You know, if any of you were outside enjoying like like parades or whatnot, I hope you went home and had a nice hot shower and a hot cup of tea because um, you're going to get sick. <laughs> 
I'm your mother. I'm wagging my finger at you. Make sure you have a hot cup of shea or a hot cup of tea and a hot shower. Um, I think that's why a lot of us are, I, I, I think, oh, and we just had the, the time change in some places. We did. So I don't know. It's just such a gnarly time of year. We need more of this. We need more of this great community coming together, hanging out, just sort of chit-chatting with each other doing something creative, sharing some smiles and some laughs, and just remembering that we're not alone. We are not cruising through this, this insanity alone. We are all together. So we are all together. We've got our sense of humor is intact and we're doing something crafty. And I have to say, I hope you guys are feeling a little bit inspired, at least a little bit. I'm feeling very inspired now that I've added this to my basket and I feel like it worked out. I, I, I think I know where I can, I can improve, but ultimately it worked out. And I was able to use it right away as a cute little patch. I'm thinking I want to try some some cotton stuff. I liked that suggestion of doing some cotton on cotton. Um, I've got all of this absolutely glorious 24 cotton, uh, the 24-7 cotton, which is mercerized. So I'm thinking this will look amazing because it's got that little bit of a sheen. It doesn't pill, it's not fluffy. It's nice and thin and I think because of its like it's clean spin I might try making the canvas with the 24 7 and doing the cross stitch with the 24 7 too I know that um, the suggestion to me was to use a slightly thinner weight yarn for the cross stitch than you do for the canvas but um, all in the interest of of uh, experimentation I'm gonna try it all 24 7. I'm gonna try one like that because I think that would look so good. My brain's racing head. Hi Lynette! Lynette with a generous super chat. Thank you Lynette. Just the super chat. Hi! <laughs> Lynette and Masha kind of just thrown, throwing out a, a, a couple keys there. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so that, I think that worked out pretty well. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of excited about that. I think one of the things I love about crochet, I know you've heard me say this before, is that there's always something new. You, you, you think you've kind of gotten to the end in crochet. Maybe you've exhausted a part of crochet and then there's something new. There's something else. There's, there's, you know, graph work to be used with crochet. There's Tunisian crochet. There's cross stitch on crochet. There's crocheting different kinds of projects. There's, there's a, I don't know, trying to wrap your yarn differently. We did a we did a, a, a quick little video a few weeks ago now on uh, yarn over your versus yarn under. Um, and I was sort of trying yarn over versus yarn under and also kind of just thinking about it. I think a lot of the time when we crochet, we don't really think about how we wrap our yarn. And I'm beginning to wonder if in the years that people have sort of complained to me about how tight their tension is and what can I do about my tension, I'm wondering now if a lot of those people were actually yarn under crocheters as opposed to yarn over crocheters because yarn under creates a tighter tension which is apparently why it's um, preferred for amigurumi. I've tried a couple little things with the yarn under but it takes too much concentration for me right now so I'm sticking with my yarn over because I can also vary my tension comfortably that way but um that's a fascinating thing. And then just trying to crochet yarn under for a while. Susie with a generous super chat. Thank you so much, Susie. You we guys are so sweet. A... And none of you are saying anything. Thank you. We also had a milestone. That was Susie's first super chat. We had a milestone. From oh my gosh. Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Kevin, member for three months. Thank you, Kevin. Hey, Jada and everyone. Hey, Kevin. Thank you so much. <laughs> Kevin's been popping in. Uh, I think your renewal popped through the chat today. And then there's a very suave membership milestone. Thank you guys. Thank you very much, all of you. I <laughs> I hope this brightened your Monday and possibly set the tone for the week. Um, it did for me. I think I'm gonna have to try, uh, first, I'm gonna try experimenting with some more cute graphs. So, if you have suggestions for imagery that you think might look good in a small graph or if you think could translate to a small graph in the comment section below so not the chat but the comment section if you have to pop back in later and just send me a little note um just toss in some ideas anything that you think might 
might condense down to a simple little graph like this. And let's get some ideas going. I, I think I like the idea of revisiting this somewhat regularly, especially as the weather gets warmer, because I like to work with cotton yarns, linen, bamboo, you know, the lighter stuff in, in the hotter weather. And I think trying some more of this cross stitch on crochet might be kind of neat. I might try cross stitch on some different Tunisian stitches. I'm going to try cross stitch on regular single crochet too, because I'm wondering how that would look because your stitches all lean one way and then the other, depending because you're going back and forth. So I think, I th think this just kind of cranked up the inspiration a little bit. I don't know. I, uh, I'm curious to know if you guys are kind of digging it too. Um, I love, I love, I love the experimentation. I love the small experimentation. The nice thing about this is that this was just a little project boop, that we were able to kind of work through in a couple of hours. And then I added it to something. So it's already been like added to a project. So it's, it's been accounted for. And I can now sort of sit back and digest it. I can digest the project. I can sort of think about what I might do differently next time. Um, next time I'll be able to move even quicker. Now I want to make... I want a new I want some new designs to try. That was the fastest cross stitch project I've ever done in my life. And I think it's largely due to the fact that I tried to keep it small. And I think approaching it like I would try and and engage a child was good for me. <laughs> Cause I think when you're learning something new, it should be it should be the easiest, simplest introduction going. Like pretend you're a child again and someone's teaching you. So I went with the idea of like, okay, well, if I was going to sit down and, and with a kid or if I was a kid and I wanted to be able to sit and crochet or cross stitch something and learn it quickly because I have a short attention span, let's say, I think this is, this is the intro. This is the way in. Um, so I want to do a few more like this because they're quick and that gives you a sense of confidence and a sense of achievement. Um, it's satisfying. And they're cute. I'm also going to try this again, but properly centered. And I'm going to try the whole thing on cotton because I want to see what that looks like. Um, so yeah, I might do a little bit of this throughout the week and I might sort of share some photos if I feel like I'm getting somewhere. Um, and uh, I don't know, yet another little crochet journey to explore. So I'm going to enjoy that. I'm definitely looking forward to more of this. Um, anyway. Hope you guys had some fun hanging out with us here today. Uh, this was a slightly different live stream. Um, I know a lot of you were saying, hey, can we see your face, please? And I'm like, well, I, I mean, sure, I guess. I mean, <laughs> you can watch my face working through things. Um, I, I, I'm gonna call that a success, even though it wasn't perfect. I'm not here for perfection. I'm, I'm here to learn stuff and, uh, uh, and have some fun, mostly to have fun. Hope you guys are too. Uh, so, Notes in the description box. I will add a few more a little later. Uh, sneaky sale today in the shop. It's our entire Tunisian uh, crochet collection. They're all on sale. Um, so feel free to pop in and, and dig up some of those if you want a couple. Um, if you're a Silk or Vicuña member, we've got uh, a pattern, a brand new pattern up on the members website for you. That's Friday's tutorial. So the the whole concept of the stitch sampler with sort of like some information and some tips on that. For everybody, we've got the Tunisian Simple Stitch Sampler tutorial that we put up on Friday. Um, had a lot of fun with that. I made a whole stack of these squares and um, people's suggestions of what to do with them all have been rolling in as well, which I love. I'm thinking like I might make a whole bunch more and stitch them all together and turn them into a bit of a bag. Like, I think that would be really chic. Once again, though, I think that might be better in cotton. So many fun ideas. I love, don't be afraid of small sample size things. Don't look at it like, oh, it's just practice and I'm wasting yarn. You're not. Think of it in terms of small little building blocks. So that's why I really recommend this little Tunisian sampler stitch tutorial. You can make a whole bunch of these perfect little squares, make them all the same number of stitches by rows. This is 10, 10 stitches by eight rows. That's what makes it kind of square-like with a little single crochet border. And then you can join them however you want. You can make a little sachet, like a tiny little gift bag if you wanted. You could stitch a whole bunch together into a blanket, a scarf, a bag, a sweater if you had the patience. What, what was the ding-ding for, mister? We had a new member join. New member, Doris! 
Doris. Welcome to Alpaca, Doris. Thank you for joining the family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, so I, I like to say no no good sampler goes, uh, no good, ex no, no good um, practice goes unused. If you make them in cotton, you can immediately use them for little face scrubbies. Uh, so try it. It's also a fun way to experiment with those Tunisian stitches. You don't need the long hook. You just need one of these, uh, which is a really nice way to introduce yourself to something like crochet. Or even if you're like, you haven't t done Tunisian in a while and you want to like refresh your skills, um, little samplers and then keep them. I've got a whole stack of them here that I'm ready to turn into something else. So, um, and then I made, like I said, I, as I was going to try some crochet, um, some cross stitch on top of this today. I might, I might even do something even smaller and simpler on that. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I'm probably going to turn those samplers into some other cute little project uh, down the road. So no, no practice goes wasted around here. Um, I like that. And I've got some little leftover ends, which is fine because all of my super, super small stuff, actually, I could probably do quite a lot of bit of cross stitching with that. Uh, but all of my little bits go into my little bits container and then it becomes stuffing for things like amigurumi. So Masha, Masha again, you sweetie. Thank you so much. Are you going to try filet crochet? I enjoy it. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, I myself have done filet crochet. We haven't done any, I don't think we've done any filet crochet tutorials on the channel because it's very specific. Um, but yes, absolutely. We're going to do some filet crochet. Um, I've actually got a few projects that I'd like to try with that. Um, but like I tell a lot of you, the the to-do list just keeps getting longer and longer. <laughs> so many things that we want to do around here. Yeah, just when you think you get to the end of it, it's like, oh, have you tried filet crochet? Have you tried mosaic crochet? Have you, you know, have you tried Tunisian crochet? There's so many different things to do just inside one little hobby. So uh, right now, I think my my current little obsession is going to be cross stitch on, oops, cross stitch on, on crochet. I like it. I like how it turned out. Um, so yeah, we will, um, we will see you guys later on this week for our regular Friday video. Please feel free to pop into the Etsy shop if you've got pictures you want to share. We'll be posting uh, more fun community posts all week long. We've got some fun photos from the community to share. We've got um, some helpful links. Um, Easter is coming. Our Easter basket, we're going to make a little post about our Easter, our egg, egg basket. Because uh, we noticed that a, um, a lot of people have been kind of watching that one lately. So if you are looking for a basket, uh, we'll post that again. Um, we've got a few different cute little basket, uh, projects and, um, I'm also going to, um, I think I might have a couple pictures. You know what? Keep an eye on the community tab. I will, I will have some fun posts for you later on this afternoon and for the rest of the week too. So, um, Mr. Stitches, anything you would like to add? Mm, we have a couple of questions here. Yeah. What is filet crochet? Filet crochet is the basically just double crochet and chains and you create imagery um usually on a flat piece like think tablecloths and placemats and square doilies and things where you um you put double crochets together where you want the positive space or the image to show and you do chain skip ones so you create holes where you want the negative space or the background, the non-image part of the picture to show. So think in terms of our Fair Isle style calendar blanket, think of what that image looks like, like a snowflake. In filet crochet, the snowflake would be solid double crochets, like three, usually it's like sets of three, three or two, all close together to create the image. And then everything else would be kind of open spaces. Um, it's very lace-like and it's neat. It's not difficult. It's literally just double crochets and chains and skipping and then not skipping. Um, and you follow a graph typically. Uh, it's kind of cool, actually. We were planning on doing um, some, but we haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, and I'm also like, I'm always just kind of looking for the right kind of image, something I want to kind of like do around like our own house. I like to, I like to use what I crochet um, or give it as a gift. So for example, if I know somebody's, you know, got a, an event coming up and I want to make something for them that's, that sort of suits their taste, then frequently we'll do a tutorial on it, especially if it's a, if it's a new concept around here. Um, haven't gotten quite to the crochet, the filet crochet yet, but yes, we will be doing that 
Uh, sorry, what was the other question, Mr. Uh, and a, a question from Catherine. Catherine asked, no, was it Catherine? Hold on a second here. Yes, Catherine asks, how do you keep it from curling? Um, it, Tunisian Simple Stitch wants to curl. That's just like knitting. Knitting wants to curl from the bottom up too. In a small sampler like this, once you uh, put the border on, it will help want to flatten it out a little bit, but you have to block Tunisian. Tunisian crochet requires blocking. Uh, some of it doesn't roll that much because the pattern, if you're, if you're doing like knit pearl, knit pearl, like the Tunisian knit and Tunisian pearl, because you're doing something a little more complicated that is making the fabric want to go one way and then the other and then the other and then the other, it'll bounce it out and it won't need, it won't curl. But most Tunisian crochet is just like knitting. You're kind of doing the same stitch over and over again. So it's, it's just, it wants to just curl up. And the only way to, to uncurl it is to block it and to and putting on a border helps too. So that's nor that's normal, that's natural, and it's just like knitting. That's why Tunisian and, and Tunisian crochet is definitely a hybrid of knitting and crochet. Um, and Jada, are you able to do the veggie cotton fruit cotton bag in a in a love video like you hmm. Jada, are you able to do the veggie slash fruit cotton bag in a love video like you did oh live video like you did today's video? Oh, like this? This one? the the fruit and veggie video and yes this is full of yarn and not fruit and vegetables because hello <laughs> um yeah yeah we could do a, we could do this live at some point that might be actually a good summary project because it's a cotton it's a cotton project um i use these all the time i use these as my regular shopping bags um i got a bunch more cotton yarn because hello the summer's coming so <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll, I'll uh, just for fun, I'll do a quick little video uh, for later on in the week, just showing you the colors that I got, because why not? I feel it has sort of a, a sunny, sunny, summery kind of feel to it. Um, that's a nice little, a little consumable bit of, of cotton. Not a lot of yappy yappy. I'll just show you the colors that I got, because I think that's fun. Um, all right. I think, I think, I think, I think everybody is... Good. If you've got questions about cross stitch on Tunisian, feel free to ask. I'll do my best to answer. I'm kind of new to this too. I know how to crochet. I know how to cross stitch, but I've never really mixed the two together. This was literally my first attempt. This was the first attempt for Jada ever. So there you go. <laughs> Not bad for a first attempt, I feel. Um, mixing, mixing two crafts together. I love to do that. I absolutely love mixing two things together. Um, I feel like it looks really cute. I like it on my basket. I'm going to add a bunch more to my baskets now. So um, I will do my best to answer any questions. I can, I can always give you an answer based on my own personal, like what I've come across um, when I do things, like my own experience. Uh, and, and a lot of that is <laughs> evident here on the channel. Um, but uh, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. I really like it. I'm going to do more of it. All right, enough yippity yappity. We got. We will see you guys on Friday here. Um, like I said, keep an eye on the community post section of the, uh, the the community tab section of our YouTube channel. That's where we post a lot of fun for subscribers and members alike, and we will have stuff for you there, and including some Easter basket related stuff. And um, Mr. And Stitches, I think you said, are we all out of questions? I don't think you had anything else you wanted to. Uh, there was a question about waterfall crochet. Do you know what waterfall crochet is? Waterfall crochet? Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Never it heard of waterfall like a crochet. Newly, a newly made up name. Is that a name for something? Like, is that an, is that an, is that a, like a, it has other names too? I don't know. I'm not familiar Most with waterfall. Most likely. I've, I haven't heard of it. If anyone in the chat has heard of it, um, plug it into the chat. Uh, Danielle says, do you have any knitting patterns? I know you do mainly. Yeah, we have, we have knitting tutorials. I don't think we have any knitting patterns. I don't, any knitting, written knitting patterns. I don't think I've, I don't think we've got not, any. Not written, no. But we do have a handful of uh, beginner tutorials. We do have beginner tutorials. Like I said, I, I, I really focused, ended up focusing more on crochet than on knitting. Um, I still knit from time to time. It's just, it, it just takes so long. <laughs> I love the way it looks, but it just takes so long. Um, I mm -hmm. will probably write a few down, um, especially some of the simpler projects that we've done here. 
um, just to be kind of helpful guides. I might get around to sort of writing a few of them down. Um, but I don't have anything more complicated. Like we don't have knitting patterns for socks or mittens or, or hats or anything like that yet. Um, I always kind of end up, I made a waterfall scarf once. Yes, Masha. That was the name of the yarn color. Um, but it wasn't a specific, like it wasn't a specific kind of crochet that, that, that I know to be called waterfall. It was just the name, first of all, the yarn looks like water, and that was, I think, the name of the colorway, so we called it the waterfall scarf. Um, but I think, what was the stitch pattern we used for that? Was that like a big, I don't remember. It was a nice big stitch pattern. One of you will help me out. I know you want to remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kevin would like to know if you could do it again. Which do I? I don't know if um, you mean the the little square Jada just made, or can I do what again? Replying Kevin? to something else. Kevin, Kevin <laughs> says, can you do it again? Probably, but what? <laughs> <laughs> Would you do it again? Would I do it again? Would I do the cross just, stitch uh, again? I guess you could just say sure. Why not? I'm going to say yes without even knowing what you're <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, probably. First of all, yes. I'm going to do more cross stitch on crochet. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to do probably everything again and again and again because I just love this stuff so much. But um, I'm sorry. I'm just... Uh, oh, I meant tutorial. Danielle meant tutorials. We've got... I think we've got two specific knitting projects. I would love to add more knitting tutorials down the road. Um, I need to rewrap my head around that for making, like for filming it. Cause we, ha we have to film it differently when we're doing knitting. Um, Cause knitting requires a bigger space, believe it or not, with those needles. It's a lot easier to kind of show crochet. Uh, so it's the cross stitch. Kevin was asking for more cross stitch. Absolutely. I'm definitely going to do more cross stitch. Um, waterfall crochet uses chain spaces and you wrap the hook in and out of the spaces with a contrasting color to make a pattern rather than carrying the colors. Oh, that sounds like weaving. I'll have to look into that. That sounds really cool. Previous rows, fill them in by reaching your double crochets down in the spaces. Oh, like spike stitching. Cool. I will look into that. <laughs> I'm sure it's just another name for another stitch. It's pattern. yeah, I know. Like so many of these of these styles kind of grow up independently, and then they get a name, and then we're all trying. Like I call a cinch circle a cinch circle. A lot of people call it a magic circle. I'd never heard of that until along came the internet, because most of the books that I had read either used sliding loop or cinch circle, and then depending on if it's like a translated book, so. There are so many names for the same thing. And uh, I think part of the fun of this whole crochet journey through YouTube has been tracking stuff down and going, oh, you also call it that. Oh, you also call it that. Okay. And there's always a good reason for these names, but um, uh, like I know, I know uh, the spike stitch to be specifically reaching down a couple rows below, a row, two or three rows below and single crocheting. That's a spike stitch. And whether you're reaching into a space or a stitch, it doesn't really matter. It's the actual act of what stitch you're doing is, is known as the spike stitch. But the look might, like the actual overall look, uh, maybe looks like a waterfall. So I totally understand why that would get that name. Um, now, if there's a, a specific difference between the act of making a spike stitch and waterfall crochet or the spike stitch is part of waterfall crochet. That makes sense to me too. I'll have to look into that. <laughs> um, do you have a pattern for a Christmas tree skirt tutorial? Yes, we do Elaine. It's our 12 point Christmas tree skirt tutorial. Um, if you search Jaden stitches and just the word skirt, it'll pop up. It's a red, white, and green, uh, circular ripple stitch skirt. Very pretty. I really like that one. Um, Offset, offset shell. Thank you, Ms. Rabbit. Yes, the waterfall scarf. We use the offset shell stitch pattern because it kind of looks like it's falling. That stitch looks like it's falling. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. 
Everybody's discussing waterfall crochet. I'll look into that. Harder than the spike stitch. Okay. I will, I will check it out. That sounds cool. I love the way different stitches look. Again, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. There is, you think you get to the end and then you realize there's like a whole branch of crochet that you haven't found yet. So wonderful. Um, all right, everybody. I think that's it for today. We will see you over on the community tab. We will see you on Friday here for a video. And I hope you all have a wonderful week. Stay safe, stay crafty, deep breath, drink some extra water, you know, maybe baby yourself a little bit this week. A little, lean a little more into the self-care. I think we all need to like remind ourselves that we are, you know, we made it through winter. We're, we're making it through March. We're coming out the other side. I know if you're, if you're on the other side of the planet, you're heading into uh, uh, fall. So if it was a particularly hot summer, again, a little extra self-care for yourselves <laughs> this week. <laughs> um, and remember, you're not alone. If you are in a crummy mood, chances are half the population of the planet is also in a crummy mood. We all tend to kind of move as a single unit uh, somehow. So I think we've got some weather blowing in. It's looking pretty nasty. It got dark there. and it's getting windy. So great. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> thanks, March. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> March is back to remind you. March is back to remind yet. you that it's not done yet. I'm only yeah. halfway done. Ah, so that means cup of tea, feed up, crochet, good music, cozy movie, favorite television show, uh, YouTube, cozy YouTube tutorials. That's what's in store snacks. for the rest of Don't the day. Don't forget snacks. Snacks, good food. Maybe make yourself a plate of vegetables, raw vegetables. I bet you you could use a plate of raw vegetables. I know I could. Yeah, you know, a little self-care. Have a nice hot shower. The good stuff. Do your nails. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Treat yourself properly this week. Uh, I think that would be good. And I think we'd all feel a lot better for that. So let's regroup on Friday. And uh, we'll all be, we'll all be um, a couple days older. A couple days wider, wiser, wider, wider. Possibly. I might be a couple days wider if I stick to the snacks. If uh, we stick to the snacking, <laughs> we'll be a couple days Wh wider. Wh a little wider, a little wiser, and uh, and <laughs> and a little more experienced. I'm going to do a little more cross stitch this week, so uh, I'll uh, I'll let you guys know how that goes too. Um, have a great week. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with us. Uh, I hope I hope we were able to bring some smiles, a little bit of inspiration, and we'll keep that going all week long. Yeah. Anything you'd like to add, mister? No, that's it. We'll All see right. everyone on Friday. Have a great week. Have